Wall Street Journal, WSJ.com, reports today more Americans go hungry amid coronavirus pandemic census shows. <laughs> Causes include higher food prices, school closing, expiration of federal jobless benefits, deepens distress. Now, I like the fact that they said, like, th- this is at least an honest headline, right? Amid coronavirus pandemic. It's still, I think, a bit of a mischaracterization, right? Because the bigger story is the coronaphobia crisis or the corona crisis as a whole is causing these things, right? But a lot of the headlines I would expect to see on this story, even from the Wall Street Journal, would be like, coronavirus causes Americans to starve. And you're like, no, no, that's definitely not the story. And like, when, when, even when you read a headline like that, some of these, you're like, oh my gosh, coronavirus makes it impossible to eat? Oh my God, are people starving to death from corona? Ventilators can't fix that. And it's like, no, 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 thanks government. Hold on. So here we go, end of the story. The number of Americans who say they can't afford enough food for themselves or their children is growing, according to census data, and it is likely to get larger now that some government benefit has expired. As of late last month, about 12.1% of adults lived in households that didn't have enough to eat at some point in the previous week, up from 9.8% in early May. That doesn't sound significant. But think about this, 2.3% of Americans going to, we don't have enough to eat. Talking something like 7, 8 million people. That's on top of the ones that were already there in May. Think about that. And it's not just the increase that we see in the statistic that we have right here that we can count relatively reliably of adults lived in households that didn't have enough to eat at some point. There are a lot of people there who like actually are not just, oh, hey, you know what? Money's tight. We got to you know, we got to we got to rearrange some things. We got to go to the food bank and the grocery store and we got to go to the we got to go to the community garden and get some cheap greens. We got you know, we got to pinch pennies and we got, oh, one night, oh, we didn't have, hey, you know, we didn't have enough and we all had, we had to eat some canned food. That, that's some of this, but that's not really what we're talking about and that's not the story. When this goes up 2.3% from 9.8 to 12.1, you're talking about a lot of people who are at the point of, oh, I got to eat less. I'd actually like restrict calories or skip meals, like actually going hungry. And it's funny because this is like this weird whiplash from the obesity crisis. We're like, ah, and it's getting worse because everybody's sitting at home getting fat. (laughs) Well, they should have been storing up more food instead of eating it, I suppose, during that time. Storing up for the winter. And I will take this as as, as the chance to gloat and say, I told you so. But really as a friendly, loving reminder that you should have a plan. You know, at, at, at very least, there's there's nowhere in America. I mean, unless you have something that's better than this for food security, like you live in a garden of tons of abundance and you have you know, excessive canned and, and pickled jarred food, whatever. Everybody should have at least the equivalent of, of, of a couple cases of MREs around. And then you would never be in a household that doesn't have enough to eat unless you're going through that store. So. Almost 20% of Americans with kids at home couldn't afford to give their children enough food. 20% up from almost 17% in early June. The data come from weekly surveys conducted by the census from April to July in which researchers asked respondents whether their households were getting enough to eat. I mean, you want to measure the depth of the suffering. But here it is. And I... You know, I don't have a lot of I told you so with this because I've been kind of taking comfort in the fact that as bad as things look overall economically, because it's 2020 and it's America and we have these food stores and we have giant stashes of canned food all over the country. And, you know, most homes, 
uh, you know, have just piled up, you know, with, you know, they say you only have three days, the average house only has three days worth of food in your fridge. Yeah, but a lot of houses, you know, have, have, have some kind of food store, at least, you know, decent amount of cans to get by for a while. <clears throat> and we covered these stories as it was happening. It was pretty early on in the pandemic when there were major challenges with demand. And it was just, this, if you think back for a second. When they first announced the shutdowns, you remember this, Jim? Mm -hmm. Basically, nobody went grocery shopping for a week. And everybody started going, oh, well, I'm going to finish what's in the fridge today. Oh, well, I'd rather eat canned food than risk dying from the Rona going to a grocery store and getting food. So th that, was a, that was a real problem. And what happened was that the food supply chain was so disrupted the supply chain of food produce in America, not the <laughs> food supply chain. Yeah. Okay. Um, food chain. Yes, we're still at the top of the food chain, it looks like, for now. And a lot of, we, we brought you these stories where it was like just tons of produce riding on the side of the road. There's, there was just a kink in the supply system from that sudden drop in demand. And we're still dealing with that. Food banks also say they have seen demand surge in the past few months. The number of people are seeking benefits from SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, commonly known as food stamps, rose almost 16% between March and April, according to the USDA. A far more rapid increase than during the last recession, when the biggest one-month increase was 7.3% in September 2008. So it's not just worse than it's ever been, but consistently over the last few months, getting worse faster than it's ever been that number is set to grow now that unemployment unemployed workers no longer receive an extra six hundred dollars in weekly federal benefits talks to extend the program broke down as democrats ought to continue the six hundred dollar payments and republicans want to spend less Trump is seeking to keep some of the money flowing through executive action this thing about hungry kids like we're, we're failing as a country, I mean, as a community, there's no way you can look at this and say, yeah, we got this. Katie Fitzgerald, Chief Operating Officer of Chicago-based Feeding America, expects more people to show up now at the group's network of 200 food banks or to apply for federal nutrition assistance. In most cases, the extra jobless benefits have pushed family incomes above the threshold of eligibility for food stamps. Feeding America has distributed 1.9 billion meals since March, about 50% more than normal. You think you think we can sustain that? You think you think the uh, the food bank system in America can operate at fifty percent over capacity for any sustained period of time? No way. The group expects to see demand for more than fourteen billion meals for next two, more than twice the number it will be able to offer. So you know we could tolerate you know some major kinks in the supply chain. We could tolerate that. But for how long? And, and we're getting to this point where, you know, every time you go, there are more people in line. And the strain on the system is getting more and more right now. People are getting to the end of their savings. People are getting desperate. So our next story is from PewTrusts.org. Struggling farmers work with overwhelmed food banks to stay afloat and it's just when you understand the economics behind this you just want to face palm so hard so as the pandemic shut down restaurants this spring california farmers and ranchers saw their markets drop by half leaving many with fields full of crops but no buyers as millions of people lost their jobs the state's food banks needed to triple california triple their food supply fortunately for california they had a long-standing Initiative Taylor made to help with these twin crises. The Farm to Family program run by the California Association of Food Banks and supported by the state's Department of Food and Agriculture pays farmers to send surplus produce to food banks. Quote, all the farmers in California that we work with, they rely on us like we rely on them. Since Stephen Linkard, who directs the program, when some sources dry up, we're still there to take the products they have in excess during this time. The farmers have really leaned on food banks to be an outlet for their products. I, I really can't even express the frustration with this. 
it's I'm I'm it's rare that I find myself sort of at a loss for words, kind of covering an economic story. But it's more than that. This is food. But what's the economic story underneath this? Is that government again? It's the, the shutdown and rebooting of the economy, right? Donald Trump and I. I don't know why this is stuck with me. Why I've kept going back to this because I don't. I don't watch that much Trump. Maybe this is the one thing I saw. It was like he said. Restaurants are going to shut down, but don't worry, they'll come back with new owners. Food, food supply is going to shut down, but don't worry, it'll come back with new owners. And now the, it's, it's, it's government. It's, it's your, you, you grew food? Well, we just made it impossible for people to buy it from you. And now we're the only ones who will buy it from you. And now everybody's in food lines. Sounds like socialism to me. I don't know about you. I don't know what definition you're working with. But that sounds a lot like socialism to me. It reminds me of the uh, you know, the Soviet Union joke, two women standing in a bread line. You know this one, Jim? You haven't heard this? In Soviet Russia, during the you know, height of the Cold War, there are two women standing in a bread line, and one of them turns to the other and says, Aren't you glad that we live in Russia? In America, the government doesn't even feed their people. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's that's the real measure of this. Like, what is, where is this story? Like, it's great, you know, that, okay, farmers are able to sell directly to food banks. But if, if, you, if you see that as good news by itself in a bubble, you know, you're really missing the point. And it is a, a real serious takeover of the American food industry. So one quote here from uh, Eva Moore, communications director for the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Nice way to end this blog. She said, quote, if there's one silver lining, it's that people are talking about local food, understanding where it comes from, and in some cases, laying eyes on the farmer who grows it in ways that they haven't before. As pessimistic as I am about where things are today and where they might be even just a few weeks from now, if they get significantly worse, I'm optimistic that America will come out of this experience stronger, better, more aware, better able to take care of each other and with better mechanisms of food, production, distribution, processing, everything. And hopefully we learn the lesson and can get to the point where we can really ensure that no child ever goes hungry in America again. And if you want to do that, if you want to achieve that, we got to get rid of the government. Remember, it's for the kids.